board. And we are recording at this moment. All right, does everybody have audio? Can you give me some feedback in the chat box? Chris, I saw you did. Everybody else? Uh, Darren, Jasmine, John, Shannon? Lisa, if you're here with, da with Darren as well, let me know what you got. Able to participate and enjoy this call. There's a chat box, and you'll want to use that. In your left-hand panel, you'll also see the host box, and the host box is probably expanded pretty tall. If you click on the little arrow beside it to minimize it, it'll shrink it up, and then the chat box will get a little taller, and that'll make it a little easier to use the chat box. You unfortunately can't make it wider, but making it taller does help. Yes? No? No one else got audio? Cool, cool. Okay, thanks, Darren. You guys were getting me worried there. Sometimes, sometimes the tech stuff has just got a mind of its own. So yeah, I have to double check. I have to make sure everybody can have a chance to get the best out of it. So let me pull this aside. And pull up the share. I had to reinstall Java because I keep Java uninstalled now due to all the known security issues with it. I had to reinstall it. Hopefully this all works. And that one. There we go. Fantastic. All fine. All right, we're a couple minutes after the hour, so I think it's time we get started. My name is Kimberly Castleberry. Most of you probably know me from taking part in my email list and being a subscriber and a reader of my blog or a member of my fan page or you just know me from around the social circle somewhere. Today is a little different than many of the usual calls that I run. You've probably been on a WordPress and social marketing question and answer call that I do monthly. And in fact, we're holding that tomorrow. So that's, always, that's almost always the first weekend, first Wednesday of the month, and that's tomorrow. Most likely, you'll want to take the things you learned today, let them percolate around in your brain, and come back to the call tomorrow because you'll have a second chance to ask questions, okay? So that'll be a second place that if the things I say today don't gel tonight when you walk away from the computer and that you can't see, if you're fussing around in your head, because I get that way, then be sure you come to that call tomorrow, which is also free, and I'll be able to help you there. But this call, rather than being focused extremely on social, while I am going to talk about a lot of social because that's the market I work in, we're going to talk about things that are a lot more fundamental internet marketing niche related, meaning looking at questions that are related to everything from autoresponders to you know, approaching a niche to driving traffic to different ways to drive traffic to different ways to approach the online business. Real focus today is going to be on your questions. I saw when I ran that survey that there were a lot of people that said, I've read this, I've read that, I've taken this, I've done that, and my eyes have glazed over, and I am so fucking lost. You know, I just, I don't even know what to do with everything I've now learned. So that's what this is for. This is my gift to you. It, anything that's between my ears that is beginning novice level, is more than welcome to be asked, even if it's completely outside of social, uh, completely outside of WordPress. Today is going to be a lot of theory and concept because that's the most important piece. The techie actually changes so often that we'll talk about certain pieces of tech, for example, autoresponders. We'll talk about the fundamental concepts behind them. But the techie in everything changes pretty rapidly. And so it's way more important that you understand the concepts behind why we do certain things. So when one piece of techie vanishes, you just replace it with something else and you move on and it doesn't kill your business because it doesn't really matter. Okay? So we want to get to there because we want to get to having that fluid nature in our business where one company, one choice, one decision of somebody else can't put us right back out of business. At least that's what I hope you want. I figure that's, that's what I want in my business. I, I want that fluidity and I want that freedom and I want to own the work I do. And I don't want it to be super short-lived. So we're going to talk about a couple different ways to approach that. And you're going to hear a variety of people ask about 
different ways of building internet marketing businesses because there's hundreds of them. And the important thing is that you've got to pick one that is for you and not try to do all of them, okay? Because if you are trying 12 different traffic strategies at once, you're going to fail at all of them. That's the unfortunate reality here. At tops, you're going to want three traffic driving strategies, no more than that. And a lot of people are great focusing on one when they're just literally getting started. You do eventually want to round out closer to three so that you have some stability, so that the bar stool that is your business doesn't fall over because one leg falls out from under it. Everybody with me? That makes sense? Give me some feedback in that chat box. Okay, I have recording going. Does my audio sound like it's topping out, like it's hitting that um, spike that makes it real um, real poor at the very top range? You know what I'm asking about? Okay, okay, as long as that looks fine. It looks like it might be topping out, but good shape. Fantastic. Yeah, you guys know that I live in the middle of a cornfield, quite literally. Internet sometimes out here can be poor. Sometimes my internet flakes up, breaks up, gets a mind of its own. Just let me know that audio has gotten poor, and I'll pause. I'll repeat what I said. We'll wait on it to catch up. It'll come back. It'll be no big deal, and we'll just go about our merry way. But you got to let me know. If everybody else has good, has good audio and you're having trouble with audio, most likely you just want to restart the webinar. So close out of your browser. Close your browser all the way down. Restart your browser. Come back in. Most likely that will fix just about everything. Organic corn? Nope, no organic, no, no organic corn. All traditional crop around here, pretty much. Um, one way or the other, you know, you'd think with all the ears, I'd get really great internet, but no, no, no such luck. So, downside of living in the middle of middle of nowhere. But you know, as you've seen from my Facebook profile this week, I've got baby calves, we've got you know horses and dogs and everything. So it's a lot of fun. What? Before we jump in, has anybody got any questions? Because I'm just going to give kind of a top-down overview, and I really want to open this to questions because there's a lot of people that have done different things and are working on different projects, and I don't want to introduce a new project into somebody's life if it's not needed. <laughs> we got any questions coming in? Chat box. And I am going to grab, grab Word just so I have something to draw on. All right. Now I got some place to draw. Okay, John, open. And Michael, by that, by that, do you mean a niche? Mean a um, to focus on, or do you mean an avenue of IEM, such as you know, generating a product initially to the Warrior Forum, or dealing with solos, or dealing with what? what are, where are you going with finding a good area? Okay, I'm going to come back and take John's question real quick, and then I'll follow up with Michael and have a look at that. John has asked, how can I take my Rolodex and names and emails and put them into AWeber and send out a friend follow-up letter without an opt-in first? The answer is, you can't. Well, you can. You can take them to AWeber, and you can manually upload, I think it's 10 at a time, and you can import them, and AWeber is going to send them a confirmation email. So they are going to have to confirm their subscription. So you can do this, but not without them having to confirm. Now, here's the thing. Because these individuals had not opted in for uh, commercial-style emails, your opt-in rate is going to be incredibly low. 
the reason that this happens this way is because that was not even a true email marketing list. Okay, had that already been opted in and been a different issue, you know, you might have better better rates. But when these are your friends and your business contacts, they didn't subscribe to you to receive commercial style business newsletters. And so a Weber is going to send them a, a link that they have to click that says, I'm interested. Now, you'll get some of them that will, oh, have you got audio, Jasmine? You okay? Jasmine, you're next. You okay? Okay, John's saying, I want to send these long-lost friends with an email and get them on the list if they respond. The far better way would be to send them an actual email from your, for example, Gmail. I'm going to say that's your email client. We're just going to pretend here. And send them an email from there and put a link in there that says, if you're interested in hearing about me, click here, put your name and email in the box, and we'll be good to go. And you'll get this newsletter from me. That is going to keep you out of trouble with spam police all the way around. It's going to keep you out of trouble with AWeber. It's going to keep you out of trouble with Gmail. It's going to, you know, you can't just move people into getting newsletters without some form of confirmation on their side. Now, I'm going to kind of take a, an edge topic off of this. If you had had a list of people who had truly subscribed, to you and you had this list and perhaps perhaps you had lost your autoresponder over the years and you still have this list and you haven't done anything with it. If you got that list cleaned, which uh, cleaning is a service that removes known accounts that have become spam traps and things like that. If you did that, there are some newsletter services, get response being one of them, that will let you bring in a list that was prior opted in. You're going to have to have their prior opt-in. You're going to have to have their IP address. You're going to have to have, you know, some evidence that these individuals had opted in prior. If you had that, get response and had cleaned the list, get response and probably let you bring them in. They have a, a pretty good process to allow that. It takes about three days. They check the list. They do some testing. They do some magic over there, and boom, they bring them in for you. Okay? Yeah. Um, Get response is an example of somebody who will. However, again, you have to have proof that they were prior opted in. If you bring them into any service, let, let, okay, let me just, let me go a far extent. If you took them over to List Ninja, List Ninja is an autoresponder that allows import. And I don't believe, personally, I'm going to get in trouble for this, so don't you tell on me. I don't believe that List Ninja checks their list as carefully as perhaps GetResponse does. Okay? You hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying it, but you hear what I'm saying? If you took them there and you imported them and you got them imported without all the proof, you're going to send them an email. And what's going to happen is your people that hit the spam button is going to be over 1%, and your account's going to be immediately terminated. doesn't matter who you're with. You're going to be over 1% and you're going to be terminated in the game. Um, that's the thing. If people have not already agreed to receive this, if they've not already made a commitment to it, when they receive it, they're going to mark spam. And it's going to hit you. It's going to hurt the company that sent the mail on your behalf. And they're going to shut you off because of it. So the better way is to work from within your Gmail or within your, your email client and send people a link to an opt-in form. You know, make it very simple. Make it very, you know, just a box. They go out, they fill their stuff in, don't ask them for a whole lot, and be done. You know, go that way. And that gives you a chance to then, you know, for example, say you, you send an email out to all of them. Make sure you do blind carbon copy, not carbon copy in your email. Don't use carbon copy because CC will let everybody see the email field. But if you use BCC, which is blind carbon copy, nobody sees who all the other people are that received it. Use BCC, send it out, then take anybody that opted in and either remove them from your Rolodex or just move them to the side. You're just segregating them, so don't send them another email. And then take all the people in 30 days that didn't do something 
whether that something was send you an email and say, hey, John, I'm just not interested, or didn't subscribe or didn't do something, take all the people that didn't do anything and send them another email. Because that flexibility you wouldn't have if you imported them into any AR. I mean, if they hadn't gone ahead and opted in and they were still doing nothing, you know, that is going to give you a far better confirmed opt-in rate. You know, or not even necessarily confirm. I mean, I'm really only talking single opt-in at this point. We're not even talking about getting them to confirm. But you want people who are committed to being there. Because if they aren't, they're going to hit the spam button. It feeds back to you as a complaint. If you're over 1%, you're done. They turn your account off. Does that make sense? I know it's not the answer you wanted. <laughs> so sorry to have to be the bearer of bad news on that one. You know, sometimes it just, sometimes the news is not what we wanted. But, the same is true. Look at it the other direction. You would not want the 15,000 people who you have networked with over the last 20 years to add you to their email, would you? Or to their email newsletter? No, not really. You know, most of these people you would not want to start getting commercial broadcasts from, um, particularly people you hadn't heard from forever. Whether you still know, like, or trust them remains to be seen. You know, and so the same thing that's protecting them protects you. This is the, the attempt to, to be compliant with the CAN SPAM Act, the attempt to remain you know, within compliance with the law. And that is why you're shut off if you get a bunch of complaints, because you're oper there's signs that you're operating outside of the CAN SPAM Act. And so that just gets you shut off, because it's easier to get you shut off and let the AR company deal with you than it is when one of those guys forwards that email up to, and you keep emailing, let's say you keep emailing and you don't, they don't get off your list, and somebody forwards that up to the FBI, let's just say, and next thing you know, you're embroiled in an email spamming case, and it's $100,000 per, per email sent as a fine. Total email sent to everybody that they deem that you spammed at 100000 a top. Youch. Well, you really have a couple choices. Um, let me see. Let me see here. Give me, let me just second see what I can do for you from here. Yeah, it would bankrupt most of them. And that's the intent. It's supposed to. It is not supposed to be something that we can hang around and, and muck around with because it's a punishment. Okay, the only AWeber account I've got from here, I can't open from here. If I use, if I use that one, we, we have issues. And that client's not on the call to tell me I can. John, I could show you some tricks if you want to go up to the Q&A. There's a Q&A box up there that's private that no one would see. If you want to let me log into your AWeber, I'll, show you, I'll teach you some tricks. Um, but other than that, look, I'm going to go back to discussing it verbally. You have a couple options within a Weber. The real simplest one is that when you go to where it says make a web form, there's the option in there to have them host that web form. And when they do that, it looks a lot like a landing page. It basically becomes a landing page. It becomes a white page with your opt-in form on it. So it functions as a landing page. And that has a URL. So all you have to do is hand out that URL. You know, that, that really simplifies the concept of making landing pages. Because these are your friends, because these are people you've met before, you don't have to worry about the high impact results of a strong headline and, you know, perfect colors and all this. You just have to have a form on a page. Well, they'll do that for you. That, that's part of the built-in features. It doesn't cost you any extra money. And it gives you a URL. And then the URL becomes shareable. And I do that a lot. A second alternative is that all a Weber lists have a name. Um, it would be like you'd have your list, you'd name your list, and let's say your list was JR News. And so JR News is the name of the list, but the email associated with the list is jrnews at aweber.com. If somebody, here's a, here's a fun tip if you're doing social marketing. 
Let's say you're doing social marketing and you're out on your fan page and you're working for remote and you don't have access to everything. You're like, hey guys, I am sending the coolest hot tip out to my list tomorrow morning. If you want to hear it, you need to be on my newsletter. If you're not already on my newsletter, send a blank email to jrnews at aweber.com and it'll sign you right up. And tomorrow morning, you'll get that hot thing. And boom, it works. They opt in by sending a blank email. Kind of a cool tip. It's really handy when you're in places that you don't have your form, you don't have a URL, you don't have those kind of things. Just have somebody send a blank email to the, the email address for the list. Michael, I have a course on that coming in sub-30 days. In fact, if you will send me a, since you asked about it, for you only, if you asked about it, if you will send me a personal email, I may be able to get your review copy earlier than that while I'm still doing edit. But you have to promise to give me feedback if I do. Deal? <laughs> okay, so send me an email, uh, put a Weber or something in the subject line, and I'll see if I can't hook you up. I've got to dig that up. That is, 15 or 16 little short videos that go top to bottom. So from the time you register the account to doing things like making a new list, to setting up you know, your first messages, to setting up a web form, to putting your web form on your blog, and then some additional um, upper level kind of stuff. So you'll really like that. That was a really complete package. I've got two videos in there. I've got to reshoot. That's the only reason it's being delayed is that they altered the, mess, uh, the message builder a little bit. So those are slightly different. I'm going to change those videos out, and then once I do, that package will be available. And I expect that to hit the market for 47 or maybe less. Okay? But, Michael, if you get a hold of me, I'll hook you up if you give me feedback. All right, I'm making a mess of soda all over the keyboard here. That's handy. But yeah, I put that course together because while they have a lot of training, it is not linear. <laughs> it is not top to bottom, and it's, it's kind of all over the place. And so I wanted something more linear. I wanted something that in my own, I guess my own tradition, you'd say, was a little more verbose and a little more explanatory of not only what you were doing, but why. And so it kind of takes my own my own flavor in that, and it's I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that pack came out. So that's it, that's really mostly waiting on on copywriting stuff on sales copy. Although I do have to reshoot those two videos. Okay, let me scroll up here. But yeah, I would take that that URL you get given. And you could just paste it anywhere. I mean, it's a great way to use that URL once you have that landing page of sorts. You can use that in social media. You can use it everywhere. That is a test that most people don't know they can do. So if I could get, if I had a, a Weber account I could get into from here, I'd show you. But I don't. So wait on that. Okay. So let's come back to Word. And in Word, we're going to come up with I'm going to do some, let's see if I can do some drawing here. Shapes. Shapes. And shapes. And shapes. Okay. I got my right in that. No, you don't want me right in that. That's great. Okay. So we're just going to, we're just going to draw some rough shapes here just so you get an idea of what I'm, what I'm talking about here. When you start approaching a, a business online from an internet marketing avenue, you kind of have to decide your original business model first. And there's a lot of them. There is a lot of business models out here that work. One of, for example, let me give you one off the, off the wall thing that Tim Castleman recently taught on that I thought was fantastic. Okay, just off the wall was Tim Castleman has a little course that he did. He did a live webinar where he, the basis of the webinar was supposed to be talking about getting out of debt. It was supposed to be talking about how to not be driving your business into the ground in terms of cost. 
and how to create a little revenue that then becomes a little more revenue that feeds into more revenue and actually gets you out of the hole rather than into the hole. You probably have this problem in marketing if you've tried this. Well, one of the methods he talked about as a model of building a business is what we call arbitrage. And arbitrage is buying something from one place on the cheap and turning around and reselling it at another place at a standard markup. And an example he used of this was he had six or seven daily deal sites. They were websites. And he talked about, you know, sticking to the very profitable niches such as electronics, sports, and he had one more. And he would buy stuff on this daily deal site. And when he first started, he'd buy little cheap stuff. He'd buy stuff that he'd put $20 or less into. And then he would relist it somewhere else. Now, he talked about the ability to list it on Amazon as well as the ability to list it on eBay. But you had to sit there with that daily deal site open. You had to look at what you could buy it for and what you could sell it for. And you had to have the pocket change available to be able to have bought that item for about the week or week and a half that it's going to be in your possession. And when you can do that, when you can float a week or week and a half of a purchase and resell it, you start by doing this with small items and making 5 10 20 bucks, And eventually you've done a bunch of these, and you've done them in bulk, and you've done a bunch more of them. And then you buy something like the – he was talking about Dyson makes a circular fan. And this Dyson circular fan is always very, very expensive, and it's very cool with the hip population. And he saw it on the Daily Deal site while we was watching. He saw it for like, I think it was on there for 100, or maybe it was 97 bucks or 110 bucks. And he looked and he said, now look there. He said, now this is when you get to where you can afford to purchase that. You come over here because when you list that on eBay, that's a $200 product. You see what happens when you can make $100 a pop moving an item from point A to point B and bridging the money for only a week or so? where you aren't holding a lot of inventory, but you do have some inventory in the middle. And so that is a business model. We can't rule out that that is a, a functional online marketing, internet marketing business model. And in fact, it's one that works. I am familiar with arbitrage from other avenues. I actually, you know, I don't work that particular avenue. But when you're looking for one that can produce some income, flipping off between sites actually works. If you want to know more about that, get with me. I'll figure out where Tim has that video for sale. It's probably 27 bucks or something where he taught that webinar. It was a really, really good webinar. But that's a business model. Another business model is building a blog, setting up an email list, and marketing to the email list. That's what I do. Okay? I add social media to that on top, but that's really my business model. I act as a, I do a lot of consulting and coaching and things on the side as well. I do a lot of service and support and things like that. But my primary business model is sending traffic through the blog to the point of conversion, which is an opt-in, or sometimes a purchase, sending those back to a, an opt-in, getting everybody on that email list, and talking with the email list, and doing some occasional promotions on both the blog and the email list. That's my business model. Another business model that's viable is one that I've been playing a little bit with recently, and that is solo ad sales. And in solo ad sales, you, you front the expense of what it costs you to, within this framework, to build an email marketing list rapidly. And you're going to build about 2,000, 3,000 people on an email list, maybe 2,000. Somewhere in there. You put 2,000 people on email list. Now, if you come from the blogging world, you think, oh, my God, that's impossible. I'll never do it. The downside of the, social, of the solo world is you're going to pay money up front to do that. You're going to do it fast. You're going to put 2,000 people on a list faster than you would think possible. It's going to happen. It's going to be rapid. It's going to be neat. But you're going to have to front the money. That's the downside of that business model is you've got to front the initial money to put 2,000 people on a list. Once you do, then you start into, into ad swaps, where two people who have one of these lists, they each mail an email for the other person, 
They swap an ad. They both build their list at the same time. They didn't spend much money. Next phase in that model is that you have somebody that wants to run a solo ad to an email marketing list. And you say, hey, I've got an email marketing list. You can run one here. Here's what it's going to cost you. And you're going to start collecting money. You're going to have to continue to build and refresh that list over time. Without a doubt, that list has rapid burnout. That list is rapid churn. You're going to have to support that list. But the money coming in at that point is a lot better than the money going out. Very profitable once you get it rolling. So general cost for which one? Sorry, I, I kind of I missed the box for a moment. Which one were we asking about cost on? For, for the solo ad stuff? You could scrape by and do it on $1,000. But I would prefer you try to do it on no less than 2500 because you're going to put that into that list initially, that initial asset. The more you can put in before you start trying to swap and the more you can put in before you start, or before you start getting into trouble, the more you can put strength into that list, the more stable your list is going to be. I know it's hard to add 500 when you start, but if you can, you are going to have a much more stable business long term. You are going to have just just a, a way better business, a way better results. You're going to put, have less headache from the list. You're going to have an easier workload. You're going to have a list that responds better. You're going to get testimonials easier. You could try it on a thousand bucks, but I tell you that's going to be darn tight. There's some inflation in that market too at the moment as well. And the cost of buying your initial solo to build your initial lead is up. And so people will tell you you can do it on a thousand, but I think a thousand is awfully tight. Um, I think twenty five hundred is probably the truer mark. And from there, here's the interesting thing. Um, i I poked around at that market for a long time. You may know I have some posts on my blog about solo ads. Not a lot, just a few. That you know, they kind of tell that I've been poking at that market for a long time. I've, I've watched them because you have to be honestly skeptical of any market that does take that much money up front. You know, that's that's a smart sense. But at the same time, once I had the ability to work with a friend and work essentially with her business, which is kind of what I'm doing some of now. I assist her with her business and she assists me with mine. And I am overseeing a large portion of her business. The neat thing is to go into a Facebook group where, where these students of uh, these coaches are hanging out and to see people honestly that are like, dude, I bought your course. I didn't think this was going to go anywhere. I bought everybody's course. I bought everything. But I did this. You know, I stuck in there. And I just had my first $100 day. And here's the thing. We've all heard hype. We've all heard people. They've had their $100 day. They've had their $1,000 day. We've all heard it. We've all seen marketing, right? We're all sick of it. But the honest truth is that the longer I've sat in this market and the longer that I have watched this market, the more convinced I am that it is one of the few that duplicate solidly. Okay? Many models out here require such a, I don't know, I don't really know how I want to say it. Let, let me, let me, social marketing is hard for a lot of boys. You guys are probably laughing at me now. You know what I'm talking about. Social marketing comes easier to gals. We're Gabby. We're, um, we're a little more put our arm around people and, and snuggle them up to us and, and build that way. It, social marketing is a little easier for the ladies. Um, that creates a bit of a trouble for a lot of the guys in Internet marketing because with everything going so social, one of the things I had wanted was to find another avenue of things that I could teach to people that they could duplicate and do that would work that didn't necessarily require them to have the advanced social skills that social marketing does. Does that make sense? Are you with me on that? I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to beat on you guys because the opposite is true as well. Um, one thing I found from working with guys is that, you know, if I've got guys who are just not getting results and it's because they're pussing around, I can tell the guys to suck it up and do it and stop being a wimp. 
I can't tell that to the ladies. They get bent out of shape. They can't handle it. Okay? The ladies, you got to, as, as a friend of mine jokingly said the other day, you've got to suggest that the reason they aren't getting diet results is that that extra piece of chocolate cake they just put on their plate probably isn't helping. You know, you can't take the real direct approach with a market that is highly female. Um, whereas when I work with the guys, I get to be much more direct, and I can get results faster. It's, it's really simple. When I can tell you to stop, you know, dicking around and tell you to, you know, stop being a pussy over it and get busy, then we get results for the guys. The women will go curl up in a hole and, you know, be upset at me, but... That's sometimes the, the downfall of me being in multiple avenues of the internet internet market. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. The t as, as Michael says, the two-edged, touchy-feely sword. It is. It is. It is. But all of us have our strengths. We all have things that we excel at. We all have things that come more naturally to us. And we all have stuff that we that we might rather do than going to the dentist, but some of us might even consider the dentist first. You know, it's just true. And I find that guys have a rougher time in the social world. It's not that they can't. It's not that they don't. It's not that guys don't excel out here. In fact, many of the big blogs and many of the big um, social presences are male-driven, without a doubt. But I tend to find that guys are almost more happy when I can give them something that they can go do the, the family stuff, they can tuck the wife and kids in bed, they can get up at 2 a.m., you know, they can be up at that 2 a.m. hour, they can bust their tail for four hours, they can put it in, they can deal with little sleep, they can live on caffeine a while, I'm not recommending this, but I'm telling you it happens, and they can suck it up and make the, the moves they need to make in, you know, in, in terms of some front-loaded suffrage, to eventually get something going a lot faster. But the problem is, here's the thing, a lot of guys buy into packages, guys and gals, guys and gals, we all buy into packages that promise us it's going to work. We get out here, we sit down, we do the work, we put it in, we get 30 days in, we have no results, we're now exhausted, stark, caffeine loaded, black circles under our eyes, can't see straight, can't think straight, and we've got no results. That's the problem, isn't it? You've probably been there. I've been there, been there, done that, trusted somebody, didn't work for me. Not saying necessarily things don't always work, but some things don't work for me and some things just flat out don't work. And we've all been sold some. So you do have to find a valid business model first, okay? Because if you don't have a valid business model, you're going to have some trouble. Now, let me say something else that... Some of you aren't going to like me for. If you are not out here intent to make $100,000, just go get a job. I'm serious. Go get a job. Get a 9 to 5. Because to make this work, you're going to have to work too hard and too long to justify petty change. If you're not coming out here intent to work this for the next 10 years, intent to build a huge ass business, intent to have huge results, and intent to build something that you can live off of, go get a job. And to supplement that, if you're currently right now super broke, if you're broke broke, go get a job. Okay, I'm not being mean here. I, I'm trying to give you the best advice I know. And if you burn the ships too early, you will not have the cash needed to stay afloat. You won't have the cash needed to invest in training. You won't have the cash needed to invest in things like building a list. You won't have the cash needed to survive when you start starving out at home. And the minute finances at home get really scary, the minute you can't provide for your family, you start doing stupid shit. We all do. It is in our psychology. You can't avoid it. You cannot avoid the way you will react the minute you cannot breathe. If I grab somebody, you know, here in the chat, and I put my hand over their mouth, they might be okay for the first second when they rationalize that there was probably no danger. 
The minute, however, that their brain rationalized that they weren't getting oxygen, and the minute they realized that squirming didn't get the need to turn loose, they would lose their minds, and the psychology and the physiology would override and cause them to do flail and scramble and, and swing at me and, and do stuff that you can't stop. And so we think that if we burn the ship early, we think that if we get rid of the job early, we're going to be more successful because we're going to be more dedicated. We're going to become more committed. That's often not true because you're going to scramble and do stupid shit. Then it's actually better to stay in a job you hate, be hating the job. Let the job be miserable. I hope you dislike that job. I hope your boss is a jerk. Go anyway until you get this off the ground. Because even in some of the fastest business models out here, even in some of the fastest, and I'm going to put solo ads probably in one of the fastest that I'm seeing lately, if you've got the upfront cash, even in that, there's waiting time. And there is time that you're going to spend in the initial, that you're initially not going to make much. You're going to have to be able to not starve out. And when you tap the mat, then you have to back up because if, if you start out and then have to go get a job, you structure everything you was building and you resent the fact and you feel like you failed, but you didn't fail because you were set up to lose in the first place. Okay? Not that you failed when you have to go back and get a 9 to 5. You've made the commitment to go back and get that 9 to 5 to get your business afloat. But you don't want to dislike the 9 to 5 so you have pressure to get out of it. If the 9 to 5 is comfortable, if it feels good, if it's secure, if you love that security, it's going to be really hard to build your business. If you kind of hate the 9 to 5, but it's useful, it's useful to you. It's actually one of the most useful things in terms of building your business. So get this business model decided on. Everybody with me on that? I understand I've gotten on a, a, bit of, a bit of a soapbox here. Sorry for my preaching. But what we see is people get out here and starve. Let me give you a bit of a culture shock. The average blog like mine begins to see useful cash flow, and I said useful, not living off of, cash flow at two years if it's really good. If you're really good, two years to a useful cash flow. Most people with a blog like mine maybe, maybe living on it by three years, but generally no. Generally no. You want to see the realistics of what blogging looks like in terms of a business model? Let's go, I'll show you some numbers. I'll show you. I'm not going to show you my numbers at the moment just because she has them. Somebody, a friend of mine, has them all laid out for her. So let me put this. You got my screen? I used to publish an income report, and I haven't lately, but, um, okay, you can get past plans there, but let's get Anna. Just because Anna has a blog that actually rose faster than mine did, okay? Anna's was a two-year blog. Mine is behaving like a three-year blog. Anna's rose faster than mine, and she has a bigger list than I do. So, you come down here and hear what I had to say about a bunch of stuff. Maybe I'm not in the right post. No, nope, that is not the right post. Oh, those are marketing campaigns, not income reports. Okay, so let's just back up to October. That's not that far ago. Now, Anna is a mom. She's got two kids, I believe. She's got a husband. She works the business. Probably close to full-time hours, but not doing 60 hours a week. And if you come down here, we have her traffic graph. Let me just put this in the chat box for you in case you want to pull it up. I'm going to show you that. That's why I'm giving you her page. Because if you pull this up, it's going to show you her income, where, where it's coming from and what she's doing. Okay, here you have last month. Okay, first of all, she's Alexa. I don't know. She's really high. I think she's a little higher than me at the moment. 
um, her affiliate marketing. She did Acme tra Traffic Plugin Pack, $410. That's been her big promotion this month. She's got 211 from Market Samurai, 202 from Tweet Adder, 40 from from A Weber for a total of 863. This is down 200 from last month. She was about a thousand last month. Not in common. Her expenses this month were SEM Rush, A Weber, Fiverr, hosting, VA help for a total of 200 in expenses. Additional purchases, things she purchased that were needed basically so she could promote stuff and so she could review stuff, comes down, you subtract one from the other, you get a net income of 638. Okay? Anybody surprised by that number? Net income for a big blog with big traffic with an established brand with a big with a big marketing list behind it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I am at two years and two three months. Two years and two months. Two years and three months. So she is at. I guess about two years. I'm at three and three months. So I guess she's at right about two years. Maybe maybe just a touch longer than that. She's two years in. Now, what, does, what is Anna not doing? Anna does not build products. Anna has no products of her own. She's completely dependent on affiliate marketing, and she is completely at the whim of Google. And once your traffic is completely at the whim of Google, then when Google slaps things around or Google even has a hiccup, your traffic goes through the floor. I understand this because inadvertently part of my traffic is the same way. I have some posts that Google just happens to love. You know, I have referral traffic too. I have my email list too. But I get a lot of Google traffic. And I notice every little minor shift because it affects income. Now, would Anna make more if she was releasing product? You betcha. Would Anna make more if she was a little more public about her coach or her um her consulting that's available and her site reviews, yeah, she would. Would Anna make more if Anna would promote stuff that her her blog audience doesn't already own? Yeah, and in fact, we're seeing that. That's why she's moved to this and this, and and um, yeah, you don't really see it up here. But Anna's aware of where the holes in Anna's business are. Okay, Anna knows what she's doing and not doing and what is and isn't working. And there's certain things like building products that she has decided she will never do. She's just decided that's not going to be part of her business, regardless of whether it holds her back financially. So you have those rights to make those decisions. You do. But you have to understand what they'll do to the bottom line, too. But Anna has you know, really had a lot of success with this blog. She's got great traffic. She's got great, you know, let's go see what she, let's go see what she's doing. And, oh, I guess this shows. Let's see here. Let me pull this up. Okay, this was a 30-month spread. And she did, this was up. She had hit a Google penalty. See, Google just knocked her off the map. And she came back from a Google penalty. So she's looking at about 50,000 unique visitors in 30 days is what's generating that income. Now let me tell you something else. Anna doesn't handle her list like I handle mine. Anna and I have very different lists. Anna does most of her, her affiliate promotions on the blog. And her email list, she reserves and pushes it very hard during a, during big product launches, okay? She's emailed them a bunch during Ryan Dice's big launch. The reason for that, she made the leaderboard. She's going to be in the money. This next month, she's going to have made a big chunk of change off that big affiliate contest, okay? So she conserves the power of her list, keeps it all friendly, keeps it all cushy, and then the, the uh, reciprocity and the goodwill of her list on big launches. Whereas I mailed for the launch as well, but I mailed a single email. And I'd have liked to have mailed a second one, but there were some things going on that didn't, you know, I just decided not to mail a second time. So 
So it's not that I wasn't going to mail, but Anna set herself up to really play the affiliate game, the leaderboard game. And she'll make a bunch of money this month. You'll have to come back to her, her blog. Um, let's see. Today's the second. That hasn't closed. So this is April, May. In May, you'll want to see her April to May income report, and you'll see how much she made. And you'll see whether it was worth it. You'll see whether it was worth it to her to really, really push that list. I honestly don't think she pushed the list as hard as she could have. I think she looked at what the leaderboard did and kind of backed off. Whether that was a family reason or whether it was looking at the performance of the board, I don't really know. Um, but she's a, I know at least out of that that she's at least got won the iPad. She's at least won an iPad out of it. So she'll have that as income next month. And that's even before sales. You guys have a culture shock yet? This is a many year project. Two of the big names that you're probably familiar with if you do anything in marketing. Frank Kern and Mari Smith. Frank Kern being internet marketing and Mari Smith being social media. I talk about those two all the time because they're kind of my role models. Okay? I operate somewhere between those two. I operate in terms of more internet marketing than Mari, less fluff than Mari, <laughs> um, more feminine and a softer touch than Frank, and more social than Frank. And so I operate somewhere between them. And so I always look at where they came from, how they got where they are, and how long did it take them. Let me tell you that almost everybody that you look at out here that you set your sights on wanting to be like has probably been here 10 to 12 years. I am aware, Mari, M A. Hold on. M -A -R -I. She is one of the biggest names in Facebook marketing. She uh, she still kicks my butt. Not so much that she's better, but that she uh, she sells more and uh, sells to clientele that I don't even have an interest in. You know, she, she, a lot of her clients are people I don't have an interest in. But she's got buff and polish, and she puts on a really good show. Uh, she's a lot of fun to watch. You can learn stuff from her. Uh, nothing, nothing bad to be said about this woman. But I'm a little more hardcore marketer in terms of marketing towards the IM niche than she is. But she knows her market. She knows who her market is. Her market is not you and I. You know, we, we enjoy her. We enjoy what she does. We learn from her. But we're not her market. And so you have to... You just have to respect where people are. But, you know, if you name people going down the list that you think are big players out here, most of them have 12 years out here. Uh, I said I wasn't going to talk network marketing, but let's just go an example, Diane, Diane Hochman. Um, Diane's an interesting gal. She brings a lot to the table. She's 12 years. 12 years. 1998 was a fantastic year for spawning more of the best marketers you've met who have hung in here. 1998 spawned, I say spawned, yeah, it, is, it is kind of spawned, but it was a good year. <laughs> it really was. But there were a lot of people from 1998 that didn't stick around because in 1998, this was a fringe industry. In 1998, the stuff we're doing barely existed, any of it. Whether we're talking hard, hardcore IM or whether we're talking social media or whether we're talking any of the stuff we do online. 1998, the net was still so new that you had to be willing to gamble. And if you were trying to build a business out here, you were gambling. And they gambled for a long time. Okay? I know that three, Mari was, from 1998, three years forward, Mari was starting to, to set her business up online and was doing some some Facebook marketing at that time was developing her brand, but she was still at a place of doing website development and doing basic web coding for clients. That tells you that she wasn't making that all off of, you know, the social media stuff or the list building stuff. She still was doing service work. Almost all of us do service work. Almost all the way up. There's no lack of service work. Why? Because it drives the business and it puts money under the business that needs lifted to get the lift. 
You know, kind of like an airplane requires a certain amount of air going under the wings to achieve lift. If you are not pushing stuff under the wings of the business, it's harder, a lot harder. Try getting that airplane off the ground without spending some fuel to get that airplane going in a forward direction to push the air under the wings. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Is everybody still with me? Let's throw some questions in the box. Let's see where you're at. Let's talk about a business model. Ask me about one of these business models. Let's delve into something. Let's, let's drill down and see where we can go and see what I can show you. Tell me something you're working on. Tell me about your business. Let's see if I can help you achieve some results today. One moment, I just realized I didn't use the phone. There we go. Anybody want to share about their business with me? And tell me which model you're working. You don't have to tell me whether you're making money or not making money. Well, but you know, most of the college beginners here, everybody expects that. You don't have to tell me exactly where you're at, but let's look at a model. Let's look at something that you're working on so that you can apply it to real life. So I can show you how to take what you're doing and move it faster towards results. Because when you know you're going to be out here a while, you don't have time to dick around. You really don't. You need to be sure that the time you're spending is time well spent. No one going to share with me? Hopefully somebody's writing a long-winded box. Oh, there we go. John's got something for me. Okay, just go ahead and write, guys. You're fine. Go ahead and write. Put it in there. I can always scroll back. John, my question to you is whether you're doing funded proposal. Are you doing funded proposal, meaning affiliate products and supplemental things to supplement your income? That is the reason network marketing relies on funded proposal in most cases, particularly when doing social marketing, because the initial run is really slow. So you've been working, you know, get late, been blogging about three months. Yeah, at three months you're not going to be getting much. You put your URL in there. Can I have a look at your site? Yeah, I can understand trying MLSP and looking at that. That is that is one avenue. It is one of Diane's favorite. It makes her plenty of money. Want to share your URL? Let me have a look at your blog. Is that pre-retiree? Okay, so this is John's blog. He says that his target is pre-retirees who need to earn more money. And here we see we got a nice thesis framework up. One second, I'm going to take a smudge off my glasses that I just put there. Not helping much for seeing through the, the lenses. Okay. Well, let's, let's all play a game of first impressions. I'm going to let this sit up here. Somebody other than John, tell me what your first impression is here. You might throw something in the box. I'm going to give you some feedback, but I think everybody else can really, I think the contributions that everybody's going to tell you here are going to help you. Yep, Michael looks standard. And standard is a polite way of saying generic. Yep. 
No, no, not really, Chris. The game hasn't changed all that much, to be honest. The game just improved. In terms of those that are building real brand, those that are building real quality on their blog, the game got better. It knocked down certain posts. It knocked down some promotional posts. Uh, backlink building is still not challenging. There's two, two keys to backlink building. Um, you know, have a look at them. I'll talk about that in just a moment. I want to let everybody finish up giving some, some insight here. Give me some thoughts on this blog, guys. Look standard is a good one from Michael. What do you think, Chris? Tell me, would you ever put your name in that opt-in box? Yeah, yeah, the answer is no. The answer is no. Not in that box. You got a blog here that is boring, is standard, is generic, it gives no trust. This blog hurts you in its present form because it does not convey trust. Okay? Your attempt, you're, you're working hard, you're, you're building content, looks like you might even be building good content. Looks like you might even have images in the post and to go in the right direction. Um, I can't fault that. I can fault this. This would be getting me in trouble with SEO, but I'll talk about that later. Oh, we'll, we'll rush on that later. But just look here. You are steric, sterile, you are generic, you are some random face who doesn't have a brand. This is not a brand. Okay? There's no implied trust for me to put my name in this opt-in form. Yeah, Jenny's got the great one. It's not compelling me. Darren and Lisa say it's not jumping out. Okay. Do you see now why you're not getting leads, John? Does this make sense? Instant one. You just drop you, your blog drops the ball for you. In SEO today, blog design is more important than ever. The look and feel of the blog conveys trust. Okay. Get a different look. Let me, let's, let me just go over to online, online income star .com. Tell me here, I don't have an opt-in box, but would you opt into this blog? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now we're back on our blog page. Would you opt into this blog? Exactly. Good headlines. Better chance. What else is catching you about this blog? Color scheme. Yep. There is a layout. There is a brand here. This theme conveys a brand. This theme conveys trust. This theme is put together. Design with Google, Penguin, and Panda, Google nailed hard on trust building. And list building has always nailed hard on trust building. So suddenly everything came down on top of trust building. And that means that design is more important than ever that these rough framework blogs that don't carry a brand visually fail. Now, I don't like telling people that they need a very expensive brand. This is not an expensively assembled blog. This is Genesis with some colors done, a custom header, uh, some custom widgets, and she did a little custom styling. This is Genesis, but she's put the work into it to brand it, and it carries all the way through. Every page on this is consistent, is well-branded, conveys what's going on here, conveys a sense of trust, conveys a look of professionalism. Yep, as Michael says, looks professional. The same is true 
imagine if you went to the grocery store today and you were standing in the checkout and you know they got all those magazines. You could buy a magazine. And let's just say you picked up a magazine from there and the magazine said, check out our website. So let's pick the name of a magazine's website. Let's go, um, man, now I need a magazine name. Oh, the one that comes to mind is first for women. I've never been on their website, so I don't know. You take care, Darren and Lisa. You guys have a great one. I appreciate you coming out. Subscribe. Oops, that's kind okay. of opt in. But if this had an opt in box, would you opt into this? If you were in their target? Just assume they're in your target. I know some of you guys are guys. Does this carry professionalism? Does this carry trust? Does this tell you all sorts of things about the brand before you even go any further? You know a lot. Why do you say no? Why do you say no? And I may have misphrased that. I may have said, does that, you know, does it tell you a lot about the brand? This isn't intended to just be educa um, educational about the brand itself. A homepage isn't to do that. A homepage's job is to draw you in. A homepage's job is actually to get a click. This page's job is to get a click. Yeah, it is in your face. It is. But what you're going to see is that sites like this actually perform very well. Right, right. It draws you in, but not necessarily trust. So the goal of this page is to draw you in. Let's see if they get better once we go in. Let's see if we get better. Let's find something edible. I could use lunch. Supreme top cupcake. Supreme. Supreme. I'm having trouble putting the tacos and cupcakes in the same brain thought. That one paused me there. It looked tasty. Looks like a nice looking recipe. But the problem here is you leave. Right? Do you see what happens here? You trusted this article. You liked this article. This was a great article. You got to the bottom. You could share it. I guess you could email it. I guess the best option would be if you were trying to put it in your cookbook, you could email it. There's no print option. There's no option to add this to your to your All Chefs cookbook. There's no feeling yet. No, we don't have an all recipe. No, we don't have the options you'd expect for a recipe. And you can't comment. So you kind of fall out here because either you subscribe or you don't even have any related posts here. You could subscribe now, but they're telling you to look for it on the news feed. So you probably wouldn't click this. But what I, wanted, I want you to see, though, is that visually, this is at least branded. This might be in your face, but it doesn't hurt them. Okay? Let's go to menshealth.com. Alrighty then. Alright, glad that wasn't just a little more revealing than it is. We're in good shape. This looks more newspaper. This is a newspaper look, a newspaper layout. Ignoring the name, attempting to, attempting to ignore the name, which side do you trust more, this one or this one? Which side are you more likely to opt into? This one or this one? Felt like I got an eye, doing an eye doctor exam. Yep, ladies come pal. You're right. Even their ad doesn't hurt because food compels. Hey, 
<laughs> I'm not sure that that necessarily would get the uh, the, the desired. Um, I'm not sure that would move the right pointer, Michael. <laughs> okay, let's go into this and see what we get. Ha ha, you gotta. See this? This is a bridge page. You see this on some sites now? Forbes is a good example of who uses a bridge page. We go into the article. This was a leading article. Again, Naked Women Compel. Would we, would we subscribe to this right now? Maybe not, but not right now. Yeah, I will in a minute. Okay, so we got a hot article that, oh, look at that. That's bait. Boy, is that bait. Look at there. I'd ask you if you'd opt in, but I'm not going to ask you to get in trouble with your wives and women. I, I'm not going to put you in that in that spot. You know, I'm not going to get you in trouble with the ladies who might already be in your life. Well, I'm going to say, though, that some men will opt in here. So what they did was they gave you a teaser of a percentage of the article and then content locked the rest of the article. You do that on WordPress with a plugin. It's not hard. But this was clickbait, okay? Perhaps not link bait, you know, not designed to, to generate links. But designed to get clicks and to get people here and to get an opt-in. We come on down. We have related. Um, oddly, that is those are ads. Oddly, those are not related. Those are ads. So this is some of the funding of the site. We have Facebook comments. Okay, and now we have related. Yes, those are related. Okay. So at least here you get to the bottom, and there's something you can do. Okay, you don't just get to the bottom and then it's like, well, find us in the store. You see what the difference is? Now let's go back to John's and go to the, okay, well, hold on. Hold on here. Understand that if I'm here, if I've just come to your site and maybe I read three keys to success in business with a service approach, let's say that one of my friends tweeted your post. Let's say that I saw it on Twitter and I came out here, so I landed on the post itself. I scrolled down. I looked at it. Um, you give me the three keys. Take a learning posture. Make others look good. Ask for a new challenge. Come down. There's no social proof of comment. If there is a comment form at least, there probably should be an opt-in box down here. You can work on that. Come back up. Come back up. Um, I don't yet feel inspired to work with John. Here's the problem. You know, I, I'm not, even this didn't really, this is a generic kind of article. You're not, you're not doing the things that draw my attention enough to say, who is this man? I need to work with him. You know, is, does this article necessarily talk to me? Um, it's, this is with a service approach. So are we talking about service businesses? We don't know. Are we talking about any businesses? Maybe I'm an investment banker. Okay, maybe I'm an investment banker. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click, okay, work with me. Now I'm looking at this from the eyes of an investment banker. And you come down to business like life should be fun, explore the options, do business from home, start building from home. Left side isn't bad, the right side opt-in box sucks. Fix that. Left side isn't bad, too long, too long. There's no opt-in box down here. You're going to have people hit here and they're going to close the tab. I guarantee you. Get another opt-in box down here. You can do that pretty easy. It's not hard with Optimize Press. You could try this, but I don't know. I don't know. This would, this would be something I'd split test, whether this would convert. But get another opt-in box back here, because they're not going to scroll back up here. You're asking for a lot of stuff here. By the time you ask for their phone number, you've already killed conversion. So the question you have to have is, do you have to have their phone number? Is there a way you can make this work without getting their phone number initially? Can you just get their name and email? If you can get just that, can you then on an internal page get more? Can you lay them down the rabbit hole? You have to have this up front. If you don't, then you want to get a name and email first 
and then take them further down the rabbit hole and ask them for more information. You with me on what I'm saying here? Does that make sense? I know I'm being hard on you. I, I know I just I've tore your pages up. I'm not being nice here, but I want to see this work for you. You've got to understand that people have, when, when there's a limited amount of trust, the less trust there is, the less data they want to tell you. So if you could get name and email here and then have an internal page that they go to immediately afterwards that gives them another short video and something and says, I sent some report to your email box, check it for that here, but if you'd like to learn more, something, something, you know, craft another headline, you know, opt into this, go ahead and get a name and email again so you can pair them up. We get their phone number this time. You probably could get this comment if you want it as an option. I said that's set to optional. Get this more complete form on that internal page. Because what you're going to have by the time you've got that is you've got really, really warm leads. These front guys, they're casual leads most of the time. And by the time you get them internal, if you've given them two short videos, if you've given them some education, and they still put their, their phone number in the box, you've got leads that you aren't going to have to close, self-close. They're looking for something. They're looking for you. You just sort them. You know, it, it's not that you, you chase people. You just sort them at that point. But this, let's see. You are looking at about a 10% drop in conversion for each field. So if you went with a really good, really, 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 really good squeeze page today and you had 70% opt-in, which would be an email only at 70%, that would be the top pages today at 70, then you would go 60, 50, 40, 30. 30% would be the top I would expect to see this page convert at. Now that's rough metrics. That's, that's taking, a, a, taking a very, very broad brush to, to not analyzing you know, everything. But the fact of how much data you're collecting is going to hurt that opt-in. So it's better if you can get their name and their email or just their email to start with. You're going to build that list faster and warm them up inside. Use the list to build some trust. Try to make a reach to get the additional information, but at least you already have their name and email. So now you can talk to these folks. Now you can share with them what you're doing. Now you can build um, a relationship with them. And that's going to help you out. Okay. Let me come back. There was one other page I wanted to look at. Move your privacy policy to the footer later. It doesn't need to be up here. Contact us. That needs to be there. What are we doing here? I'm not sure I like that up there, but it's not killing you. I'm curious why your homepage only shows one blog post. Into the, the problem is when you have them only show one and people get to the bottom of that preview page and think they should be able to comment there and they aren't in the actual single view so they can't comment. It will cost you some comments. Not a, not a life ending thing, but. That's a good looking article, John. It's a good looking article. Well, this is your blog page. And so in thesis, there's a place you set how many posts display on the home and whether they display full text or partial. And you want to display oh, 5 to 10 and have them display in partial. Let me see if I can find that for you real quick. It's 
Well, each individual post has comment boxes, but the problem is your front page is emulating an individual post without comment boxes. So that's the problem. You've got a page that looks like it should have them that doesn't because it's not supposed to, but it's looking too much like your single view page. Home display, features and teasers. Oh, I can't show you that because mine are custom coded. I had mine custom set. Anyway, it's got a lot to do with this. Play with this setting. We're in design options and then home page display options. And you'll want like five. Five is generally enough. Okay. All right. Somebody else give me a site or a project or something you're working on. Let's take a look at something else. type and I'm still here. Just confirming I haven't vanished on you. Have you got a website, Michael? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and put that in there. Let's do that. Okay, if it just started. Started is better than most people have. Okay, so where would your audience know this logo from? Where would your audience have built an affinity to this logo? Because when we want somebody to wear our logo on their chest, they have to already have an affinity to the logo before they're going to wear it. Or the shirt had better just be so cheap that it's like, oh, what, it's got something on it. You know, big deal. But we're not going for the Walmart route, so we want them to buy this because it's got a logo on it. We want them to wear our logo. So they have to already have an affinity to this logo. Okay, so you're going to build up the phrase watch geek as, well, do they already think of themselves as watch geek? Is that something your market already thinks of themselves? Okay, here we go. There we go. Let's get into your market here. So your market already thinks of themselves as watch geek. You've got one logo. 
You probably need to get some more then, right? The doll hair is probably going to get a bunch of these. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, if they think of themselves as watch geeks, then you're you're on the right path. Ideally, yeah, ideally I'd have liked to have long scrolled and kept seeing more options. More options, more shirts, more sizes. Yeah, no, I'm not like Jeff, that's okay. So you're going the right way, way with that. So what are you using to bring traffic to this page? Or what will you be using? I know you're not yet, it's not ready. Will you be using that big forum that you co-run? Okay, so you have the forum, you have the fan page. Okay, I noticed that you said 5,000 fans. Please tell me that is a Facebook business page and not a profile. Let me see that URL if you want me to tell you. If that is a profile, um, I will assume you know the rules, given that last. Profiles are not for business use. And, you know, a conversion is in your future. Fortunately, you can convert a profile into a page. You may add a personal profile. If it really is business centric and needs used from a business perspective, you need to do a conversion. Okay? You're not going to have the freedom to market until you do a conversion. So converting that into a business page is going to be the next step for you. Besides the fact that you're lost at this point. You know, um, the problem at this moment is if you run a single promotion, a single something for sale, in that on that profile, you can lose everything. You lose your account. All gone. Tomorrow, no backup, no recovery, no recourse, no arguing, nothing gone. Okay? Don't do that. It's dangerous. You know, it, it just it sucks to be in that shoe. And I know, I know fan pages have crappy edge rank. They got crappy reach. They got their own mess of stuff. I can't help it. I, I can't. I wish I could. I would love to have back the reach I had two years ago. Would be happy with that. Um, but you do have to watch because if you put all this time into building 5K, to have it taken away from you tomorrow would suck, right? I mean, you still got the forum. Fortunately, you still got the forum. You're honestly doing something, you know, with converting fans into members somewhere else. So you're doing something into something. Well, I started to say something you own, but do you own that forum? No, you sold that. Yeah, if you can get them to move themselves, that's great. That's great. If you can get them to do that, that would be cool. That would solve your problem. And for that, I would suggest using, within your profile, I would promote the post. I would come underneath to where it says, oh, it doesn't say there, but... Um, this one, like this one here, there's a promote link. I would promote it. Your profile can promote for seven bucks as long as you don't have more than five thousand friends or followers. You'll have friends or subscribers. You'll have that option. Okay, so you sold the forum. You sold a lot of the pieces. So now you're just attempting to monetize off the top of it. The problem I see here, you've got you've got a couple good sources of traffic, but you really need your own brand. You really need to, even if you're just going to sell them shirts that are generic towards Watch Geek, you really should become someone. You really should form something. So because, let's say I love watches. Let's say I bought that shirt from you. When I go and I, somebody asks me about my cool shirt, I say, I bought this from... Ooh, Watch Geek Wear. Okay, so you're working on your brand. And you need some place that beyond your sales page builds that out as a brand. 
So again, you're going to work on a fan page. You're going to move some of your people over, work on a fan page. But would be nice to have some additional, would be nice to have some ability for you to be much easier to find in Google. Would be nice for you to have things like that. Okay, so you're going the right direction. You got a WordPress, WordPress going on. And is that under slash blog? Did you go there? Or did you, how did you set that in? Oh, because this is a page. I realize this is an unroot. Okay. Okay, so you're going the right way. Yeah, 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 that. You got the idea. That's blue themes. Yeah, so just keep expanding the direction you're going. And as soon as this is finished out, then the goal is just to tap into those two existing sources of traffic that you've got. I mean, a forum with 90,000 members is a huge asset. Of course, it's not your asset, but you run it, so it might as well be. Can go that far? Might as well be, maybe. I assume you have a pretty big liberty with it by the way you're sounding. So you've got that as a traffic source. You know, you've got that as a source, a community that you can mobilize. And I think you're going to have to do some some awareness building within that forum. And for that, I'd recommend some, some little contests. Do some contests. Let them win some t-shirts. You know, put some shirts aside. Use them for contest page. Build awareness of what you're doing with some contests. Get people mobilized. Get them to just think about you as a, think about this as a brand. Think about this as stuff they can do. Planning a design contest, cool. What are you going to do? But a design contest is only one possible contest. You're going to have fans who aren't design creative. You know, look for other ways. Don't limit it to just design, or you're going to leave a whole chunk of people out. And I say this because I'm the non-visual creative. I'm the one who gets left out of a contest like that. So, you know, if you wanted me to play, I couldn't play in that contest because I can't draw my way out of a paper bag. But, yeah, use the contest as awareness building. Use them as as things to build the awareness that not only do you have stuff for sale, but that the brand is a brand. And for that, I would go ahead and make sure that that Watch Geek Wear was up at the top of this page. You need a header graphic and get that up here at the top of it. Okay, rather than the Watch Geek being the first thing that's seen because you are not the Watch Geek. Well, however you added graphics, just make a you just make a banner graphic and you just put it in here as your top graphic. What did you use to make this page? Okay, you're on premise. Yep, you can do that on premise. Yeah, um, you can do lots of things on Prima. Just get a graphic in there. You'll be fine. No concern there. But yeah, get a consistent header graphic that you use across most of your content that really carries a, a brand emphasis, a brand logo. You really want to focus on making sure that, you know, they see this site and this company as a business and as a brand. And as such, you're going to have to do some awareness. You have two great sources of traffic. You just want to make sure that this kind of stuff is in place before you really tap into that market so that you get the best use of the promotions you do to them. Well, PayPal and Aweber are pretty easy. Shopping carts are where it gets messy, and it gets messy particularly when I mean, you're dealing with static products. I personally, I use WP, um, hold on, projects, projects, WP eStore. I know this is an ungainly URL. I can't help it. He makes long URLs. Okay, cool, cool. You are in good hands with these guys. Their forum is, is just, yeah. 
good people here. Here there be good people. Here there no be dragons. Yeah, this integrates with PayPal, integrates with Aweber. You will be that's the right connection. What part of the install? Yeah, I like this plugin because it's one of the easier to set up shopping carts. No shopping cart out here is easy, easy per se. You know, that is a rough, a rough thing because it is a big piece of software. But this is one that I've, I've really liked in terms of the way you can display a lot of content. They can handle digital content and all the way over to handling shirts. I'm not sure if you're aware, but he has a setup service. Yeah, yeah, that might just be your best way to approach it. And if you want my vote of confidence, he has access to like my big three sites. He has the ability to just, just walk in and, and tinker on my big three sites. He has open logins. Because I do that much with his team. And um in terms of keeping my stuff stable. So in terms of you know whether it's trustworthy to do such, yeah. Yeah, definitely these guys and these guys aren't going anywhere. They're not a fly by night shop that's gonna it's gonna vanish anytime soon. Really good people. Is it only forty bucks for a setup? If so that's cheap. If he's only charging 40 to set that thing up, <laughs> good grief, use it. I know funds may be tight, but yeah, you're going to save yourself so much headache. Yeah, I would have expected well more than 100. So definitely take advantage of that. That's cool if you will. The nice thing about that is then he looks at the other plugins you're using and other stuff you're using at the same time, and he makes sure there's no conflicts, and he makes sure that you know, if there are conflicts, it either suggests a workaround or helps you with a workaround, things like that. Chris and Jenny, you too. Anything got, got a situation you want to share? Got a site, a blog, something you want us to look at? Got a business you're working on? Some place you're feeling lost? It is your turn. Come on, Jenny. I know you were here. I saw you earlier. Okay, so you're an info overload. That's cool, Jenny. That's all right. And the fact that you know that is a great start. Where are you at with your business? Where are you at? What are you trying to do? What's the, what's the goal? Because if you tell me what the goal is and tell me what you're aiming for, you know, even if you don't have anything set up, then I can help you know what pieces you're going to have and what pieces you can just like cast aside and completely ignore and you can filter out and you won't be so overwhelmed. Because that's what overwhelm is. Overwhelm is actually not too much information. It's not knowing how to filter it. It's not knowing what pieces you need to keep, what pieces you need to use now, what pieces you need to put away for six months, and what pieces you'll never use. And everybody throws stuff at us like we'll use it every day, and they forget that no, we won't. Okay, so you're going to build a blog. That's cool. Have you picked up my video library? Only reason I say that is there's lots of tutorials in there in little bitty bite-sized chunks to help you do the things you're trying to do. Are you interested in just any niche, or have you got something in mind niche-wise? 
there's some niche area you're kind of looking at, something you have a background in. We want two goals. One, something you can write about even on days you feel like you can't write about anything. And two, something that is in a sector that's profitable. You can go outside of a sector that's profitable, but you do that at your own risk. You want to build a passion blog, that's totally cool, totally cool with it. But I prefer people to work within a industry that they can monetize a little easier. Helps prevent with burnout. Are you licensed in either? You have certi certifications for licensing, depending on what your background is. Okay. It's a pretty hot market in the in the sector of memory aging at the moment. You know, a lot of of people buying and selling stuff that is related to improving memory and to sustaining memory and even memory gains and and things like that. Okay, I understand. But you have, but with those credentials, yeah. But with those credentials, you've got a big piece of the authority already figured out. Okay, you know, you, you've got one one piece already in your hand. Yep, uh, authority you got. Authority you got. Um, do you enjoy talking about and teaching people? We're talking about these topics and, and teaching people about them. If you overheard somebody, you know, a friend was with her, with a, a family member, and you were standing there, you didn't really know the family member, but you were with the friend, and the family member, and the family member complained that oh, they just, they just couldn't remember what was on that list, and they didn't know where their memory was going, and you know, this getting old stuff sucks. Would you be able to open a conversation with that individual? All right, look at this. You're 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 shooting aces. You're shooting aces. So what you want to do at this point, you can either run with that topic from a passion side and become simply a brand authority and become an authority out here, and that's a long road. Not not a wrong road. That's a long road. The better road would be, as you said, you're looking at the efficacy of many of these products, and you need to find some that you think work and that you believe in. You really need to find some things that you can use to monetize that you can believe in. You know, if you want to be Dr. Oz for memory and aging, you know, Dr. Oz has to find stuff that Oz can promote. Exactly. Can't believe, monetize stuff we don't believe in. And that's why I'm telling you that's what you've got to find. And in fact, if that's where you're at, I think I would halt on the WordPress stuff just momentarily. And I would go spend some time on Amazon, on eBay, surfing the web. Even look at, you know, sites that are geared more towards clinical health than towards casual health. And see what you can find. Because that's going to tell you if you can find items that you're going to be able to believe in. And if you can't find items, then you're going to know that you're going to have an, an area that is going to be very hard to monetize. Now that's not that you can't write an ebook and sell the ebook, but if you can't find things already in the industry that you believe in, it's going to be hard for you to create additional products outside of an ebook or a short video course. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be hard for you to go further into product development if other stuff doesn't appear to be there. You know, I look at everything from supplements to exercise protocols to exercise DVDs to all of that. Be sure you find some. If you can find some, you don't have to find them all today. If you can find some, find enough that you feel you have a framework of products. Not a bunch, just maybe five or six. Even four would be great. If you can do that, then this is a preset of niche. You are you are ready. That that is all. Yeah, four would be fine. Four would be fine. That's a great place to start. You really don't want to be promoting 50 products out of the gate. But if you find four, it means you can find 10. You know what I'm saying? If four exists, then 10 probably exists. You just don't have the time to chase them today. Okay? So that's going to tell you a lot about, you know, where you can go with this. 
And if you find, you know, if you find that you find products, and you're passionate about this, which you are, you've got authority, which you are, you can talk about this, you know, long beyond boredom, which you can, you, you've got your niche, sweetie. You, you may want to decide on a specific little sub-angle, but go ahead and get started. Go ahead and get started. You can always narrow. Okay? You can always narrow. You can always widen, but widen is, de widen is dangerous. You know, it's dangerous to go wide. But you can always narrow up. So go ahead and get started because you've got a lot going in your favor with, with credentials and with, you know, a passionate background and things like that. Yeah. But I would stop worrying about WordPress at the moment and be sure you have have the product, have the angle, have the those kind of things. And once you have those, then I would, I would park that in, a, in its own shoebox, okay? And next step would be to decide who your target individual is. The thing about people you've worked with, people you've talked to, people, you know, so-and-so's grandma that has XYZ condition, or so-and-so's grandma that just has these symptoms and they frustrate them. You know, or maybe you're just talking to people like me who put something away and wind up hiding it from myself for six months. Yeah, that could be an, an option too. Uh, okay. Exactly. And one thing I want to tell you about baby boomers. My mother's in that category, and she does not consider herself a baby boomer. She would never search for something baby boomer related. She sees herself as, you know, somebody fully capable. She sees herself, you know, as somebody who's been blessed to get the kids out of the house. And you have to figure out how they see themselves. And you have to talk to them the way they see themselves. And when you do, they'll resonate with you. But if you give them labels that they dislike, they're going to hide from you. You're, you're aware from that from clinical. I know you are. So, but definitely pay attention to how they see themselves. And when you, when you really hone in on that, and I don't know your age, but if you're in a situation where you're younger than most of them are, oh, okay, okay. So, all right, so there is authority for you. That's actually a plus. That helps you. You would have more problem in this if you were 33 my age. Because what, do, what the hell do I know about memory and aging? See what I'm saying? I mean, I could study a textbook till I'm blue in the face, but you've lived through it, girl. You've lived it. Me, I'd have to go find some senior citizens and interview them. I would have to borrow credibility in, in aging and memory by interviewing people because I don't have that personal credibility in terms of personal experience. You have it. I think they are, but I think you are in a situation where once you've got started, once you have a little traction, and I'm not going to ask what finances are, but once finances aren't miserable, then the thing you're going to need is a telephone line. You know, you're going to get a VA that can man, man a phone line and can handle web orders for people and can handle remote orders and can make sure that people can just call you. You know, if they want to buy X, Y, and Z, you know, if they get your, they get your secretary, that's fine. They place their order, and you help them out. Well, you're actually going to build trust when they call somebody up and they get somebody on the phone. Oh, my goodness, I can talk to someone? And it's not going to charge me $9.99 a minute? Imagine if you get a little... Um, a secretary, receptionist, who might not necessarily know the industry, but is very, very compassionate and very loving and will listen. Think of how much many people just want to be heard. If you can get somebody that you won't shortchange for spending time hearing these people, they'll be excellent on the phone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They want somebody they can call. So you've got a lot of things in your favor. Now, 
I will say you're in a very a very competitive niche. Okay, you know that. You know you're in a competitive niche. I want you to plan for long-term brand building. That's what you're faced with. Okay. You're in some you're in a situation where you're going to need to build long-term brands. I think in your situation, unique to you, the things that would benefit you once you're started, you're going to have to get started, you're going to have to get the initial blog going, you're going to have to get some initial run. And then I would like to see you guest blog and get interviewed every place you can. Okay? Because you're brand authority. Your business model here is brand authority. If somebody will interview you, get them to do it. Okay? Don't necessarily beg them. But make yourself available because then you're going to get their credibility on top of your own. And then you're going to get featured on their side and their side and their side and featured there. You might also want to talk with Haro, help a reporter out, which would tie you into your local newspaper systems, things like that. You get a local newspaper journalist who's doing an article on aging and memory and such. Your name's in the HARO database, that you're contactable, that you'd be happy to do an interview, get interviewed. Next thing you know, your name's in the people. Next thing you know, you scan that paper in, you put it on your website. Featured in this paper. Here's the article. Share this article by social. The fact that it was published is social proof. Doesn't matter who interviews you. I don't care if they're fairly small. You don't want somebody totally beginning. But just go for interviews and go for guest blogs where you can get in as well. If you can get them to interview you, that's better than guest blogging, but for sure getting guest blogging where you can. On blogs that are related, look at who is already in your industry, who already has traction, and see if they'll accept a guest blog post. Yeah, you're going to benefit big time from interviews. You know, everything from little ones with helping a reporter when it's a newspaper and it's just a name mentioned, you know, to a video clip to, you know, jump on a Google Hangout with somebody and do a, a live interview on a Hangout, and you both have the video to use. Take advantage of that. Plan for long time, long term, but you are working for brand authority. You've got the things you need are already in your pocket. You've already done the work for your PhD. You've done the work for authority. You've got the age that makes you credible in that. Go for it, girl. Um, other angles, other angles, if you're comfortable on video, YouTube would be a big site for you to do like little five minute tips, but if you're not, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fuss over it, but that would still help you out because they look, they still look like little television spots. LinkedIn isn't going to be a big site for you, but it would be key for you to have your LinkedIn profile optimized. If you don't want to learn to do it, have somebody help you do it. Okay. Just get your LinkedIn profile keyword optimized so that you're findable. Okay, you want to be found for all of your key terms. Okay, Facebook, you've got a lot of your demographic there, but at the same time, that's the usual runaround with Facebook. Some of your demographic is on Twitter, but not many, and Twitter's got its own issues. You don't have a lot of demographic on face on Google Plus, and you've got the same issue with Facebook. You're really working from the brand side and from the blog side, and for that, I think getting interviews is going to be your strength. And I think that the process known as own the race course might be another strength for you, where you take one piece of content and you disperse it onto multiple platforms, not, not like just sharing a link, but you take a video you produce and you transcribe it and you turn it into a blog post. And then the blog post gets converted into a PDF and shared to PDF sites. And then this goes around and around. That's called Own the Race Course. And remind me in the next week or so, I've got a really busy calendar the next two weeks, but I will try to send that out to my email list. And there's a lot of free, there's some free stuff I've got my hands on that would really benefit you to sit through and watch them. There's some videos that talk about how to do that. And once you own the race course, you, it helps you become a brand authority. 
So if you don't see those in the next two weeks, remind me. That's called Own the Race Course. And I'll, I'll help you get, get that stuff. Yeah, because I want to share that out with the list. I think everybody should see that. It's good stuff. Any other questions? Yep. Yep, just like that. What's the question about this? <laughs> yeah, what's up? Yeah, there is. Um, let me find it. All right, did I literally come up with another? Or did I break through the Google search? Oh, that's cool. Search isn't working. Cool. I will tell you that you will have to get on their list to get a copy of that, even the free one. And then I suggest you get off their list. They, they are very aggressive. You understand what I'm saying? To put it mildly. And if you're looking at doing banner ads, this is a post that I covered some actual stats that I received on some banners I ran. It's kind of old now, but banner ad marketing hasn't necessarily improved. So, except that there's less competition in it when you're buying ads in other ad spaces. Any other questions? I think we're about done. I know this has been a long session. I hope you guys have gotten a lot out of it. I hope this has helped you move your business forward. I know that it can be really, really rough when it seems like you got to do everything now and you got to learn everything now and you're trying to fit what you need to do into what someone else says you should do. So that's why I was glad that I got a chance to work with several of you individually, you know, semi-individually, so we can look at your individual case. And, you know, you're in different places and there's very different things that you need to focus on at the moment. Any questions before we wrap up? Otherwise, I think we're going to call it a day. Going once, <laughs> going twice. All right, everybody, it has been fun. I appreciate you coming out today. If you need additional questions answered, come to that call tomorrow. You'll, you'll get a lot out of it, both from the WordPress side as well as being able to toss additional questions in. You know, I'm not going to run you off if it's not WordPress and social questions, so just, just Feel free to come hang out. It's good stuff. And I will see you again in the very near future. You're welcome anytime in general as well to stop by my Facebook page. Not my profile, my page. And you can always ask questions here as well. So this is another avenue that the wall is always open to you. So you have that available. All right, guys. You take care and have a fantastic day.